Welcome to the Raw Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton. Today we're going to be talking about deadlocks. One thing that you need to know before we talk about deadlocks is knowing about race conditions. I have a video about that in the description. Go ahead and check it out. But nevertheless, a deadlock is a situation which happens when two processes are fighting over a resource. Let's say you have a plate of spaghetti, I have a plate of spaghetti, we're both proper Italians, there is only one spoon and one fork on the table, I grab the spoon, you grab the fork, neither of us can eat the spaghetti. When we were talking about race conditions, it is two processes essentially overriding each other's work, and the resulting issue is essentially inconsistent state, maybe in the database, maybe somewhere else. When we're talking about deadlocks, it is a process or multiple processes waiting for a resource to become free, and that never happens. This may result in a part of your application essentially not working or the whole thing grinds to a halt. Not a very good situation to be in, so today I'm gonna show you how you can reconstruct, simulate deadlocks, and what you need to watch out for as the main symptom for detecting deadlocks. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we have the deadlocks application and the program CS file. It is very simple. We have a semaphore. We're going to wait for the semaphore and we're going to try to print out hello world. I'll open up the terminal and run the application. And hopefully comes as no surprise, our application is hanging. This is essentially a deadlock, a very minimalistic one. And it may look silly at this point. However, you actually need to do a little bit of work. You got to try to arrive at this point. And some people arrive at this point accidentally because instead of having a single semaphore what you have are two semaphores and then you end up in a situation like this where you have one process you trigger one semaphore you go into the other process you trigger the other semaphore and then you come back around to trying to use the initial semaphore let's say these both start off at one we'll, we'll run the application and again the application hangs the semaphores over here are meant to represent locking scopes. So at the beginning of F1, you can try to lock a database record. F2, you're calling another service. And then F2 internally is also going to obtain the same piece of data. And that is locked. So that component is waiting for the data to be available. What we're looking at here is not sequential execution, but we're looking for circular reference in the locking mechanism. If we go down the scope, something like this, and format the file. I know the scope over here doesn't really do anything, but this is just to illustrate that this semaphore call that we have over here is nested deep inside whatever call chain we have. If we want to put a little bit more into perspective of multiple processes working on this, let me collapse the terminal and we're going to use a task run, some kind of lambda over here where we will take F1 and F2. We're going to await on them here. In between, we're going to use task delay and wait for just a second. Make sure to make this asynchronous. And we will also have an integer. We'll make sure to reference. So some kind of result prop int number, create this result at the top. And at the end of this task, we're just going to increment the result. I'll format this code, a semicolon on the end. This will produce task one. We're going to remove these semaphores. We're going to produce a second task. This is going to be task two. And we will switch the semaphores around. In this situation, whatever execution chain you have amongst your components is not circular and you're not really reaching the same semaphore. What you have in this case is two processes are reusing the synchronization mechanisms and they're actually reusing them in different orders. When task one kicks off, we're going to obtain the first flag and then task two kicks off, it's going to obtain a second flag. Both of them will wait for a second and then they will not be able to obtain the opposite flag. So F1 will be taken, F2 will be taken. They will be sitting here waiting for it to be released indefinitely. If we create a while loop, call it true and then put these in here and we'll say console write line and I'll put the result number format this code open up the terminal and uh, let's stop this previous application and run this one we will see that we always get zero printed to the console and the tasks are never really finishing the interesting thing you might ask here well we have the tasks and they're never finishing we're essentially doing a lot of fire and forget 
Does that mean that we have tasks building up in memory, essentially causing a memory leak? And if I open the dot memory profiling tool and I will attach to the deadlocks process, we're going to see that the current memory usage is 2.9 gigabytes growing up to three. And here is essentially a garbage collection that has happened and it is going to go on and on and on. Not exactly 100% sure what the garbage collection was at this point, but yes, we're constantly creating tasks which keep getting added to the memory and we're never releasing them, causing this continuous climb in memory. And that is essentially how your application is going to grind to a halt. Uh, let me stop it over here. Hopefully my computer is not going to explode. Whatever process a user has kicked off on your backend, that is going to hang, taking up resources, essentially a task waiting to continue. And what the user is going to experience is just a spinny wheel. Now, if you do that enough times at scale, your memory is going to shoot up. It is never going to go down. And at some point your application will crash. Now, if the lock exists on the database side, the server will still go down because you have execution context spiling up. Once the server falls over and then spins back up, it is going to repeat the process because the lock exists in the database. Now that we're familiar with the two scenarios, the first one was that we make sure we don't want to loop back around to the original resource and try to relock it, essentially a recursive approach. And the second approach is really reusing the locking mechanisms for two processes that are running in parallel. With this, let's go over to the web server example. We have a couple of situations. The first one is the forgotten one. You forget to release a resource somewhere there. And uh, that is simulated by the SEM over here. The SEM is just an implementation of the semaphore slim with a single available flag. We're going to call it once. We're going to forget to release it. That is generally what can happen. You can, you will forget to unlock your record in the database or an exception will happen and you're not going to have a final clause. So the next call that you're going to make is going to fail. Then you have that looping call. This again can be between your services or between your server where you have some kind of endpoint. It is going to be synchronized. You're going to have an HTTP client to call somewhere else. And that other endpoint in this situation is recurse. So we enter right back here again. We're going to encounter slim and we're just going to hang because we have already grabbed the one flag that is available over here. So that is recursion. We're essentially looping in on the logic in our infrastructure. And then there is a mutual recursion where it's essentially the same setup, although this endpoint calls another endpoint and this other endpoint just reuses the same semaphore. So even if you could have the different locking mechanism, this endpoint or this service can end up calling the initial endpoint again, and then encountering this semaphore or a semaphore that might be on some other endpoint, but essentially mutual recursion between services and that can cause a deadlock. So let's take a look at this. First of all, the forgotten endpoint, I have my application running over here. Let's open it up. On the forgotten, we get the hello world. And if I refresh, it is going to start spinning indefinitely. So I'm going to stop this. We will then go to the recur. The recur is going to hang straight away because remember, it is going to try to get a resource called the database that is going to get locked. Or in this case, we're basically calling ourselves and we have not released the slim. So that is now hanging. And the same thing is going to happen if we call the endpoint with mutual recursion. So again, to simulate two services, first service calls the second one, second one calls the first one, and they are reusing the same locks. So the whole thing gets deadlocked, it essentially stops moving. And if you're thinking, how can I ever end up in this silly situation where my services are calling each other? Well, if you have beginners, building microservices where HTTP clients are just calling everything from everywhere, you will be surprised how easy it is actually to end up in this mess. And that is pretty much it. Remember, if you don't want to end up in a deadlock, first, make sure your execution paths are not recursive. Second, make sure that you're not using multiple resource locks against multiple processes running in parallel. Try to let them have their unique exclusive locks. If you're struggling with the first two points, the other avenues that you can explore is immutable data. And the second one is message queues. Nevertheless, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, 
you know what to do. If you have any questions, make sure to join the Discord server. If you would like to say thank you and support me, please do so on my Patreon. You can also get the source code. Very, very big thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your help is greatly appreciated. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.